This is another one of Fitness Blender's Total Body Kettlebell Workouts. In this workout, we're going to start off with a quick cardio warm-up, and then we're going to go through 18 different kettlebell exercises one round through. Now the difficulty of each one of these exercises varies greatly, so you'll want to make sure you have a wide selection of different kettlebells or an adjustable kettlebell like we use. Now I've also included a nice long cool down stretch at the end of this routine. Before we get there, we need to do our warm up first. So let's go ahead and get started with our cardio warm up. We're doing 30 seconds for each exercise, starting off with arm circles. Let's go ahead and start them up. We're going to be doing 15 seconds in each direction. Just get comfortable with it, get those arms moving. You're not swinging them around, this is a controlled motion. You want to make sure you're trying to get as much range of motion out of that shoulder socket as you can. You're really trying to warm it up. And go ahead and pause, switch directions. Do the same thing in the opposite direction. Nice big circle, trying to get as much range of motion out of that shoulder as you can. Try to get as much mobility out of that shoulder as possible. Really trying to open up that range of motion. Now we're almost done. And let her relax. Gonna move on to the next exercise, the torso circles. Get those hands up on those hips, making a nice big rotation with that torso. You're gonna pause at the bottom every single time. You want this motion nice and slow under control. Don't let yourself start speeding up and start swinging around. You want a nice, slow, controlled motion as you stretch off to the left, back behind you, stretching those abs, then off to the right, stretching that left oblique, then back down to the center, facing straight down, stretching that lower back. Just keep alternating back and forth. One more time down in front, and let it relax. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one, a toe touch kick. Be kicking that leg out in front of you again. Make sure it's controlled. You'll be reaching down towards that foot with that opposite hand. So if that right foot comes up, that left hand's gonna go down to try to touch that toe, and vice versa. Just keep it going. Nice, slow, controlled motion. Really get a good stretch on it. The main thing is trying to get that lower back and that hip to open up a little bit more, start to warm up. And we're almost done. Just a few more seconds. And go ahead and let it relax. Let's go ahead and move on to our next exercise, the torso rotations with high knee. With this exercise, you're rotating those shoulders back and forth, left to right, at the same time as lifting one knee. So every single time you rotate those shoulders to the left, that left knee is going to come up. Every single time you rotate those shoulders to the right, that right knee is going to come up. And at the same time, you want to try to rotate those hips as well. So whatever direction you're rotating those shoulders, you want those hips to go the opposite direction. Try it again, warm up that torso. So we're almost done. And let's go ahead and switch over to the standing oblique crunches. With this exercise, you just want to alternate back and forth from left to right, bringing that left elbow down to that left knee and that right elbow down to that right knee. Trying to keep your torso as straight up and down as you can the entire time, only tipping left to right. You don't want to actually rotate your chest down so you're tilting your chest down towards your leg. You just want to bring that shoulder down to that knee. Now we're almost done, just a few more seconds. Keep that motion going nice and strong. And go ahead and let it relax and move on to the next one, the up and out hops. Now we're going to be alternating back and forth between legs. You're just going to bring that knee straight up in front, then up and over to the side. Tap that foot again, then bring it right back to the center. Just barely tap that foot every single time. Get a nice big range of motion out of that hip, trying to get as far out to the side as you possibly can before bringing that foot back to the center. Again, we just have a few seconds left till we move to that next exercise. Just keep that motion going strong. And let it relax. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next exercise, just traditional jumping jacks. Get those arms and legs moving nice and quick. Get those hands up over top of your head. The same time those feet come out, as those feet snap back together, those hands come back down to those thighs. Keep that motion going strong, making sure that shoulder is nice and tensed. You don't want to just flop those arms around. You want to make sure everything is a nice, deliberate motion, contracting all those muscle groups throughout that shoulder and upper arm. And we're almost done, just a few more seconds. Keep that motion nice and solid, and let it relax. Go ahead and move on to fly jack. So it's almost the same exact motion, but instead of bringing those hands over your head, you're bringing them in front of your body. So it's gonna go with those legs nice and close together, those hands gonna be in front of your chest, with those legs apart, those hands can be out nice and wide. Now again, make sure you're keeping that shoulder nice and solid. You don't want those arms just swing around. You wanna make sure that you're keeping a really, really deliberate motion on those arms, especially with this one, because you don't want those arms to hyperextend back behind you. You only wanna let them go as far as you can control. So just keep that motion going a little bit longer. We're almost done. And let it relax. All right, switch to high knees, drive those knees up really nice and high, barely letting that foot touch the ground before you're pulling it right back up again. You wanna to try to get that knee to at least hip height, higher if you can. 
Now this is our last exercise of the warm up, so make sure you're really pushing yourself to get ready for that first kettlebell exercise. You don't wanna leave anything left, you wanna really, really push through this one, get that heart rate up really nice and high, make sure that core temperature is up really nice and high. We're almost done, just a few seconds left. And let it relax. All right, let's go ahead and get ready for our kettlebell workout. We're gonna be starting off with a traditional kettlebell swing. So go ahead and grab a weight that's gonna be appropriate for you. We'll go ahead and get started. Doing 20 repetitions of this one. Make sure you're keeping that back really nice and flat. Don't let those shoulders round forward. The vast majority of this exercise is driven from those legs and those glutes, those butt muscles. So you don't wanna really use those shoulders a whole lot to pull that kettlebell up. You want to build that momentum with those legs by popping that weight up, shoving those hips forward, and kind of throwing that kettlebell up to that shoulder height. This exercise is all about momentum, so you wanna make sure you build that momentum as that kettlebell goes up, and you try to decelerate that momentum as best you can as that kettlebell starts coming back down. We're almost done. And let it relax. Let's go ahead and move to our next exercise. This is gonna be a full kettlebell swing. So this one is the same exact motion, but you're gonna get that kettlebell all the way up over top of your head rather than just that shoulder height. Now, if you're not comfortable with this, then just do a regular kettlebell swing again. Let's go ahead and get ready. And start them up, another 20 repetitions. This is really important to keep that back really nice and flat. As that kettlebell goes up over top of your head, you're gonna have a tendency you wanna arch that back and actually tip that chest back behind you a little bit so you have a big sway in that lower back. Make sure that you're trying to keep that back really nice and flat, contracting those abdominal muscles, keeping those hips pulled forward in front of you to make sure that you're protecting that back. Now it takes a little while with this exercise to get used to getting to that hover point that's right above your head and not going past that point. You wanna get it just right up above your head and don't pull it any further. As you can see, I went a little bit too far on that one. Try to recover if you do that. Just try to recover as quickly as you can. Get right back into it again. And we just got a few more repetitions. And go ahead and let it relax. Let's move to our next exercise, the alternating single arm swing. Now go ahead and select the weight you need for this exercise. Remember, we're doing this with one arm at a time, so you're gonna want a little bit less than you use for that full swing. Also, take your time with this one. If you need a little bit more rest, go ahead and hit pause. Otherwise, just try to keep right on with me. All right, let's go ahead and get ready. Grab that kettlebell, starting with either hand, doesn't matter. Just go ahead and start that first swing. Remember when you get it up to about chest height, that's when you're gonna switch those hands, bring it down with the opposite hand, and then right back up, switching back to the original hand. Just make sure you keep this motion nice and clean. You want it under control all the time. Bring that kettlebell up to chest height, no higher than that, before you switch off that other hand, and back again. Now just like with any other swing motion, you wanna make sure you keep that back really nice and flat. Because you're using a kettlebell only in one side, it's gonna to wanna to rotate your shoulders. Try to keep those shoulders as parallel to the ground as you possibly can. You don't wanna let one shoulder lean forward further than the other. It's gonna to want to, and it's gonna do it to a certain extent, but try to keep it nice and flat. And go ahead and let it relax. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the next exercise, which is gonna be a kettlebell rack. That is a relatively small range of motion. If you haven't done this exercise before, you wanna make sure you start with something relatively light to get the form down first. The form of this is really important because it'll actually go into a lot of other exercises. All right, let's go ahead and start it up with that right hand first. You can do a little squat, then jerk it straight up to that shoulder. You wanna come straight up the front of that body in line with that shoulder, and then you're gonna rotate that hand around till that kettlebell drops right in between your forearm and your bicep just resting on that arm right there. Keep that elbow tucked in nice and close and that's your rack position. Then flip it back around, drop it, and then pop it right back up again. Now again, try to make sure that back stays nice and flat. You wanna drive this motion mostly from those legs and those hips, driving it up, building that momentum into that kettlebell, rather than using that back to kind of lean backwards and yank it up that way. You wanna make sure that you're primarily using those legs, not that lower back. And we've just got a couple more repetitions and we're gonna switch sides. And that was your last one, go ahead and let it relax. Take a short little breather, we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Go ahead and grab that kettlebell again, go ahead and stand back up nice and straight and tall, then drive that motion with those legs. Get that momentum into that kettlebell. A little bit of bicep, a little bit of shoulder is gonna help get that kettlebell up, but primarily all that momentum, all that strength is coming just from those legs.
We're almost done, just three more repetitions. Keep them going nice and strong. One left. And let it relax. All right, go ahead and drop that kettlebell down. Let those arms rest for just a second. Go ahead and select your next weight. We're gonna be using a lot lighter weight on this one, especially if you've never done this before. This is a bottom up rack and hold. So you wanna actually have that kettlebell inverted when you get to that rack position. So we're gonna be doing the same exact thing, but keeping that kettlebell turned upside down. So it's the same jerk motion, except that kettlebell is gonna come straight up rather than rotating that fist. And that hand's gonna come straight up in line with that forearm, straight on top of that elbow. And that kettlebell is gonna hover right on top of that hand. Now it takes a little while to get used to hovering that position, so don't worry if you're not getting it down the first time. Just take your time and definitely start with a nice light weight. And we're almost done, just three more repetitions. Just keep it going nice and solid. One more. And let it relax. Go ahead and switch those hands. We're going to do the same exact thing on the opposite side. Another 15 repetitions. And start them up. Like I said, this takes a little while to get used to, so don't beat yourself up if you don't get it right away. Just keep right at it and make sure you're not trying to overpower that motion. That's one of the biggest mistakes that most people do is they try to sling that weight up there too quickly with too much oomph and it just keeps right on going. So take your time, it should be just enough power to get that kettlebell directly above that elbow and no more. If you try to push more, it swings over. If not enough, it's not gonna get quite all the way up there. So make sure that that momentum that you push into that kettlebell to get that kettlebell up there is just enough that it starts to decelerate and stops right above that elbow. Just takes a little while to get used to. And that was your last one right there. Go ahead and drop that kettlebell back down. Give it a little bit of a rest. Go ahead and select that weight for our next exercise, which is gonna be a squat and press. So we're using that momentum again, so you can usually do a little bit more weight than you can normally do with a static press. All right, go ahead and sling that kettlebell up to that shoulder, starting from that rack position. You're gonna do a nice squat, nice deep squat. Then on your way up, shove that kettlebell the rest of the way over your head. As soon as that kettlebell comes back down to that rack position, drop into a nice deep squat again. Now you wanna make sure with this exercise that you pick a weight that is challenging for you, but you can still control. You wanna make sure that you actually have to uh, put a little bit of extra momentum in it with those legs to get that kettlebell all the way up over that shoulder. You don't wanna pick a weight that's light enough that you can actually just do a straight shoulder press from that rack position. You wanna to have to have that momentum there to get it the rest of the way up. All right, so we have just a few more repetitions until we switch sides. Just keep it going. Again, really pop with those legs to get that kettlebell the rest of the way up. And that's your last one. Go ahead and let it relax. We're gonna switch sides. Another 15 repetitions. Remember, drive with those legs. Go ahead and jerk that kettlebell up to that rack position. Get comfortable. And start that squat. Nice low, deep squat. Try to get those hips as low as you can, as low as comfortable. Then a little bit of a quick pop on your way up to get that momentum into that kettlebell to help you shove it the rest of the way over top of that shoulder, doing that shoulder press motion. Then right back down into that rack position as you drop back down into that squat. Just keep it going, nice smooth controlled motion, making sure you get a nice even pace. And we're almost done, just three more repetitions. Keep that shoulder going, keep those legs going, we're almost done, just one more. And nice and slow, let it down, and let those arms and legs relax. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our next exercise, which is gonna be a kettlebell halo. So select your weight for that one. You're gonna be holding it in a goblet position or a bottoms up position, holding the sides of that handle rather than the center. All right, go ahead and grab that kettlebell, flip it upside down. I'm gonna bring it right in front of that chest to start. Then you make a nice big circle around that head, trying to let that kettlebell or those arms touch your head. Keep it going in the same direction, nice fluid motion. Try to keep an even pace, and you wanna to try to keep those elbows tucked into your head as tight as you can. Now we're almost done, just two more repetitions around. One left, and pause it, go ahead and switch directions. I'm gonna go ahead and switch positions so you can see me from the front, that motion's exactly the same. Getting a big circle around that head, but making sure you're keeping nice and tight with those elbows. Don't let those elbows go really wide as those shoulders get more and more tired from this exercise. They're gonna to wanna to start going wider and wider on you. Just keep trying to squeeze them in nice and tight. It'll make those shoulders have to work a lot harder. Just a couple repetitions left. And there's your last one right here. 
and let it relax. All right, let's go ahead and get ready for our next exercise, which is a lunge with a single arm swing. Now, there's a lot going on with this exercise, and it's really difficult to stabilize yourself, so make sure you use a really, really light weight. We're going to be starting with your right hand and your right leg. Every single time that arm comes up in front, that leg's going to step forward into that lunge. Let's go ahead and grab that kettlebell. We'll get it started. So you want to get that momentum going into that kettlebell, so a little bit of a swing forward, then swing it back as you tip your chest forward. You're actually going to tip forward from that hip joint before kicking those hips forward and swinging that kettlebell up and then kicking that right leg forward to go down into that lunge. It's going to take a little while to get used to it. That's why you want to make sure you start with a really nice light weight, just a slow controlled motion. You want to get as much momentum into that kettlebell as you can. You don't want to have to really rely on that shoulder to try to jerk that weight up. Otherwise, you're going to put too much stress on that lower back. Try to get that hinge motion going. That'll help you quite a lot by getting that momentum built into that kettlebell so your shoulder doesn't have to do the work. All right, go ahead and let it relax. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Remember, swing it forward just a little bit. Swing it back and hinge forward with your body. Then snap those hips forward and step forward as you raise that arm up. Now again, you want to make sure the most important thing you focus on is keeping that back nice and flat. Don't let those shoulders round forward. You want to hinge just from that hip socket, not from that lower back. Now the biggest thing that's going to help you out here is getting a nice even pattern going. So as that kettlebell swings back, you're also tipping that torso forward and you're using that momentum to get that next one right back up again rather than having to stop and restart every single time. So keep this motion relatively quick. And make sure you're not relying on that shoulder to get that kettlebell up there. It's all from those legs. And go ahead and let it relax. We'll move on to our next exercise, which is just a simple lunge and rotation. We're going to be doing an alternating lunge. So every single time you step out, you step out with a different foot. And you're going to be rotating left to right with those shoulders. Trying to get as much of a rotation through that torso as you possibly can to really tax those core muscles as well as challenging that balance. All right, go ahead and bring that kettlebell up to that chest. Go ahead and lunge out with one foot nice and low, and then rotate those shoulders. Come right back up and out with the opposite foot. Now as we do this, we're going to actually make it a little bit more challenging by actually extending your arms out further away from you. What that does is it changes your center of gravity, makes you have to work harder with those core muscles, as well as increasing that challenge to your balance. So just watch as I do this. My hands are going to start moving out a little bit further, just a few inches at a time. Just try to push it out to your maximum as far as you can control and try to hold it there for the rest of these repetitions. If it starts getting too difficult for you, then you can always start bringing those hands slowly back in. Just keep that motion going. Again, this is a regular lunge position as well, so the further you lunge out, the harder it's going to be on those legs. So try to challenge yourself there as well. And we're almost done, just two more repetitions on each leg. Try to get those arms out there as far as you possibly can, really challenge yourself. One more on each side. It's your last one. And let it relax. All right, good job, drop that kettlebell. And we're gonna take a little bit of a break here. This is our halfway break. If you want a little bit longer rest, go ahead and hit pause. Otherwise, we're gonna start right back in in just a few seconds. And go ahead and move back and grab that kettlebell. We're going to be starting the second half of this kettlebell routine with a single leg deadlift. So standing on that left leg first, kettlebell in your right hand. Go ahead and tip straight forward, nice flat back, getting down as low to the ground as you possibly can, and then slowly back up. Try to keep that leg as straight as possible as well. If you need to, you can bend that knee just a little bit, especially if you have tight hamstrings. But try to keep that leg as straight as you can. Try to keep that back as flat as you can. Now another point to remember is to try to keep those shoulders as parallel to the ground as you can. Try not to let those shoulders rotate. Whichever hand you have that kettlebell in, your shoulders are going to want to lean that direction. So try to counteract that by keeping those shoulders nice and flat. And it's going to be a lot nicer on your back. Just make sure you're keeping this motion nice and slow to help you keep that balance. And this is your last repetition right here. Stand back up nice and straight and tall and switch sides. So you're going to be holding that kettlebell in your left hand this time, standing on your right leg, tipping straight forward. Again, try to keep that leg as straight as you can. Make sure that back is nice and flat. And don't let those shoulders rotate. 
Remember, keep that motion nice and slow under control to help you keep that balance. The faster you go, the harder it's going to be to keep that balance because that weight's going to start building up momentum. So the slower you go, the less momentum you build up, the better you can control it. We're almost done, just two more repetitions. Keep it under control, keep it nice and slow. It's our last one. And let it relax. All right, good job. Let's go ahead and move to our next exercise, the Turkish get-ups. Now, a lot of people have trouble with this exercise, but it's primarily because they try to move too quickly through this exercise without getting the fundamentals down. So make sure you really take your time to go through this if you're new to it. If you already have it down, then keep up with me. Go ahead and grab that kettlebell. Lay flat down on your back, we're starting with that right arm first, so right arm straight up above that shoulder. Left hand kind of kicked off to the side just a little bit, starting with those knees bent at a 90 degree angle. Extend that left leg out straight, lean forward up, prop yourself up with that left hand, kick that left leg back underneath you from that lunge position, and then straight up, then reverse it as you come back down. Again, kick that left leg forward, tuck it underneath, stand up from that lunge, right back down to that lunge, Kick that left leg back forward and slowly down one vertebrae at a time. Just keep that motion going under control. Remember, if you are having trouble with it, slow it down. The slower you go, the easier it's going to be for you to understand what the motion is coming up next. And then just slowly move through it. Start increasing that speed as you can as you start feeling more comfortable with it. And then you can start increasing the amount of weight you're using. Now we're almost done. This is our last one right here. Nice, slow, controlled motion. We're going to switch sides after this one. Slowly back down. And let it relax. All right, go ahead and switch hands. Do the same exact thing with that opposite hand. So kettlebell in that left hand this time. This time you're going to be extending your right leg out, tucking that right leg underneath. And start it up. Crunch forward. That right hand kicks out to prop yourself up. That right leg kicks back underneath you into that lunge position, stand up from there, then reverse it as you come back down. Just keep that motion going nice and slow under control. Remember, you can always slow that motion down, move a little bit more deliberately to help you out with that overall form. Now we're almost done with this one. You just have one more repetition to go. Nice and slow up. Tuck that right leg underneath, up from that lunge. And slowly back down. Kick that right leg back forward, then slowly roll it back down. All right, that is it. Go ahead and drop that kettlebell off to the side. We're going to be moving on to our next exercise, which is a kettlebell pullover. So go ahead and grab the weight for that one. Lay flat down on your back and extend that kettlebell directly over top of your head to get ready. All right, go ahead and get ready. Grab that kettlebell and start up. Pull that kettlebell directly over top of that chest, then slowly back over top of your head. Nice controlled motion. Make sure you don't swing those arms. You want a slow contraction, squeezing those arms up over top of your chest. Don't bring it any further past that chest. Then slowly back down, back over your head. Try to get that kettlebell as close to the ground as you possibly can without touching, and then bring it right back over top of that chest, stopping right above that shoulder joint. Again, don't let that kettlebell come any further over top of that chest or that stomach. You want to stop right above that shoulder joint and then back out. Make sure those abs are contracted nice and tight to keep that lower back flat against that mat and keep that rib cage stabilized. As you extend those arms above your head, your rib cage doesn't want to kind of tilt up to make that motion a lot easier. Try to keep that rib cage flat against that mat. And just a couple more repetitions. Nice and slow back down. Squeeze it back up, just one more. And that's it, go ahead and let it relax. Set that kettlebell off to the side. Go ahead and stand up, get ready for our next exercise, the hammer curl. 
Now we're doing this a little bit differently than a traditional uh, dumbbell hammer curl. This is going to be a bottoms up hammer curl, which has a lot more leverage to it and requires a lot more grip strength. Let's go ahead and get ready, starting with that right arm first. Get a nice good grip on that kettlebell and then bring it straight up in front of that bicep. You want to squeeze it all the way up just like you would a traditional hammer curl. Keep that elbow down, tucked to your side. Bring that fist straight up to that shoulder as close as you can get. Nice tight squeeze without letting that elbow kick forward. And then nice and slow back down again. So as you can see here with that bottoms up hammer curl, as you curl it up, you're actually going to invert that kettlebell. So with that ending position, with that fist as close to that shoulder as you can get it, that kettlebell is actually pointing upside down. And then nice and slow, drop it back down. Again, it's going to take a little while to get used to keeping that balance of that kettlebell pointing upside down, but it just takes a little bit. Just make sure you're moving nice and slow and you're not swinging those arms. We just have a couple more repetitions. Keep it going. Keep that elbow tucked back nice and tight. I know that bicep's getting really nice and tired, but try to keep that elbow tucked back. Don't let it kick forward. And go ahead and let it relax. Switch those hands. We'll do the same exact thing on the opposite side. So again, starting with a nice solid grip, bring that fist all the way up to that shoulder joint as tight as you can without letting that elbow kick forward. You want to try to keep that elbow tucked back as tight as you can the entire time. And of course, make sure you're keeping that motion nice and slow and under control. Now we're almost done, just two more repetitions. Keep that elbow tucked back as best you can. I know that bicep's getting really nice and tired. If you have to, let that elbow kick forward, then freeze it back at the top of that range of motion, and then slowly let that kettlebell drop. And let it relax. All right, let's go and move on to our next exercise, the tricep extension. We're gonna be doing this with both hands at the same time, so pick a weight accordingly. Go ahead and grab that kettlebell. Be holding it on the sides of that kettlebell instead of that center of the handle. Flip that kettlebell up over top of your head, almost like a halo motion. Then keep it straight behind your head, extending those arms directly above that shoulder joint, then nice and slow back down. Make sure as you start getting tired, especially that you don't let those elbows start drifting forward. You want to keep that upper arm from that elbow to that shoulder perfectly straight up and down, perpendicular to the ground. Just a nice slow press straight over your head, and let those hands drop down as low as is comfortable. And we're almost done. Just two more repetitions. Keep those abs nice and tight. We're almost done. Last one. Press it up and let it relax. All right, good job. Go ahead and drop that kettlebell down. We're moving to the next exercise, which is a kettlebell side crunch. So we'll go ahead and grab that mat, get it ready, select that weight that you need to be using for this one, and go ahead and lay down on your left side first. And go ahead and lay on your left side with those knees tucked up in front of you. So those hips are at a 90 degree angle off your torso, knees are at a 90 degree angle. That kettlebell is going to go straight above that shoulder on that right side. That right hand is going to be straight up above your head. Then crunch up to the side, to the right side, as tight as you possibly can. And then slowly let it back down, but don't let those obliques completely release. You want to get as tight of a squeeze, pulling that right shoulder down to that right hip as much as you can before you slowly let it back down. But again, don't let those obliques completely release. You want to let those shoulders back down and touch the ground, but don't let those muscles completely relax. Just keep that motion going nice and slow, making sure you get a tight squeeze at the top every single time.
And we're almost done, just two more repetitions. So last one, and let it relax. We're gonna switch you over to the other side, same exact motion, just on that right side this time. So lay on that right side, those knees tucked up again in a 90 degree angle. Grabbing that kettlebell with that left hand this time, straight above that shoulder on that left side. Then do that crunch up to the left side. Nice tight squeeze, getting up as high as you can. And then slowly back down, but again, never let that oblique relax. You want it to always be contracted until you're finished with every single one of these repetitions. And we are almost done, just two more repetitions. One left, and let it relax. Go and drop that kettlebell off to the side. We've got another exercise coming up, the toe touch crunches. You're gonna be laying flat on your back. Get that kettlebell directly above your chest with those legs straight up in the air. All right, let's go ahead and get it started. Bring that kettlebell straight up above that chest. Bring those legs up in the air. Then crunch that kettlebell up towards those toes as tight as you possibly can. Nice and slow back down. Again, make sure those abs stay contracted the entire time. Even when you drop back down, you never want to let them completely release. Making sure you get a really tight squeeze as tight as you can at the very top of that range of motion. Forcing as much range of motion out of this as you can, but at the same time, keeping those legs nice and straight. And we are almost done, just two more repetitions. Nice tight squeeze, and let it relax. Go ahead and set that kettlebell off to the side. We're moving on to our next exercise, which is a kettlebell Russian twist. Go ahead and sit up on that tailbone, select that weight accordingly. You're gonna grab that kettlebell, turn it upside down on those hands, holding onto the sides of that kettlebell. Get that back nice and flat. When you're ready, go ahead and lean back to about a 45 degree angle or as close to that as you can hold. Kick those legs out for counterbalance and then extend those arms straight out in front of you at a 90 degree angle off that chest and then start rotating left to right as far as you can control, as far as is comfortable. Trying to really work those obliques, those abs and that lower back all at the same time as well as you should be feeling it in those hip flexors and those quadriceps, the front of that thigh. Just keep that motion going under control as best you can trying to really push that range of motion the entire time. Just keep that back nice and flat. That is the most important thing you need to worry about with this exercise is you wanna make sure that back stays perfectly flat. Don't let those shoulders round forward, otherwise you can enter that lower back. Now just one more on each side, and let it relax. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our next exercise, which is gonna be a kettlebell back bow. You're gonna flip over flat on your stomach for this one. You don't need much weight at all. Some people might wanna do this without any weight whatsoever. So select what weight you can control, and go and flip over onto that stomach, extend those arms straight up above your head, those legs out in the opposite direction, and get ready. All right, extend that kettlebell out, turn it upside down, flat against that mat, facing down towards that mat, and arch it up really nice and high, get a nice tight squeeze at the top of that range of motion, slowly back down with a little bit of a hover, and then right back up again. You wanna to try to get as much distance off that mat as you can with those arms and those legs, keeping that leg nice and straight, keeping that arm nice and straight. Slowly drop it back down before pulling it right back up again. Just keep it going as smooth as you can. We're almost done. And let it relax. All right, good job. That is the end of this kettlebell routine. Now all we have left is the cool down and stretch. Go ahead and pause it here if you want a little bit of a break before we get started. Otherwise, we'll start here in just a second. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our cool down and stretch, starting off with a torso twist. Just really nice and slow, rotating those shoulders back and forth, kind of letting those muscles and those obliques, those abs and that lower back all stretch out and relax. All right, we've got torso circles next, so go ahead and bring those hands down to that waist, round that back, stretching around just that torso, try to keep those hips straight up and down. You're gonna pause in the front and then rotate back around the opposite direction, just alternating each time. 
And we're moving to tricep stretch next. So bring that left hand over top of your head, reaching back towards that left shoulder, stretching that elbow back behind your head as best you can. You should feel a stretch to the back of that upper arm. And go ahead and switch sides, bring that right arm across, same exact motion, just on that right side. And go ahead and let that one relax, we're moving to the chest cross pull, you're grabbing that left arm from that elbow, pulling it across in front of your chest, getting as close to your chest as you can, should feel a little bit of stretch to the back of that shoulder, maybe into that shoulder blade. And go ahead and switch sides, same thing on the opposite side, grabbing that elbow, pulling it across, keeping as close to your chest as you can. And go ahead and let that one relax. You're gonna do a wall chest stretch, starting with that left arm first. Place that hand up on a wall about shoulder height. Rotate away from that hand, trying to rotate that chest out away from that arm as much as possible. You should feel a stretch either in your bicep or in the front of that chest. If you're feeling it more in your bicep, then roll that elbow until you feel it in your chest. Go ahead and switch sides, same thing in that opposite arm. And go ahead and let that one relax. We're gonna do a calf stretch next. So hands up against the wall, one leg back behind you, stretching that heel down towards the ground as best you can, really pressing it down. You wanna to try to get as much of a stretch as you can. Go ahead and switch sides. And let it relax. We're gonna do a toe touch next. Those feet nice and close together. Stretch it straight down as low as you can go, keeping those legs nice and straight. And go ahead and let that relax, go ahead and stand up. We're gonna be doing a quad stretch next. Kick that left leg back into that right hand, squeeze that heel as close to your butt as is comfortable and push that knee back behind you to get that stretch to the front of that thigh. And go ahead and let that relax, switch sides. Right foot into that left hand, squeeze that heel to that butt, kicking that knee back behind you. Should feel the majority of that stretch to the front of that thigh. You might also feel it to the front of that hip flexor and possibly even into those lower abs. And go ahead and let that one relax. Spread those feet really nice and wide apart, about three times shoulder width apart for a wide floor reach. Just stretch down towards that ground, get as low as you can, trying to push those elbows to the ground the entire time. And go ahead and let that relax, stand it back up and keep those feet nice and wide. Bend one knee and kick that foot off to the side and lean back towards that straight leg to get that inside of that thigh. Just hold it there, trying to push that hip down as much as you possibly can. And go ahead and switch sides, rock those feet back the other way, leaning back towards that straight leg again, trying to press that hip down as much as possible, getting a good stretch of that inside thigh. And go ahead and let that stretch relax. We're gonna sit down on the ground for the next one, which is a butterfly stretch. Bring those heels together, stretch them in as close to that groin as you can, and then lay those legs out flat against that mat or as close to as you can, using the outside of that thigh to pull those legs down. Should feel a good stretch to the inside of that thigh. And let it relax. We're moving to a glute stretch next, a deep glute stretch. Go ahead and kick that left leg over top of your right, bringing that right leg back as close to you as is comfortable. You should feel this stretch on your left side. Just slowly bring it in closer if you can, just breathing normally. And go ahead and switch sides. That right leg comes over top of that left. Tuck that left leg in as close as is comfortable. Slowly trying to pull it in more the entire time. And go ahead and let that one relax. We're gonna flip you over into your stomach for this next one. We're doing a cobra stretch. Hands down by the base of your rib cage. Arch that back up as high as is comfortable. Kick that head back as much as is comfortable. Try to get a good stretch all the way through the front of that chest, down through that stomach, even into that hip flexor, and possibly even into the front of that quadricep a little bit. 
Just a few seconds left and let it relax. All right, good job. That cool down is done, which means our workout is complete. You just finished another one of Fitness Blender's Total Body Kettlebell Workouts.